Hey everybody, Nathaniel here. Um, hope you guys are ready to get functional. Uh, we're going to be getting started with the Keras Functional API. So we went over the goodies last time. We're going to be talking about incredibly complex stuff this time. Multi-input, multi-output models, getting different nodes from those models, sharing layers, all this stuff and more. So <laughs> let's, let's get started. Okay, so the Keras Functional API, remember the sequential API that I talked about, forget it. You're never going to use it. I never use it ever. I always use the Functional API. A lot of the stuff that we learned there is important, um, but Functional API is where it's at. So first example, let's make a densely connected network. Oh, what is this? Um, so remember, uh, we had this dense layer. Um, I guess I never really explained what the dense layer was, but it, it takes some inputs and it maps them in one dimension and it maps them to another dimension. And the way it does it is it looks at all the, the, the previous dimensions and it sort of connects every node in the previous dimension to the, or in the, in the input to uh, every node in the output. So if there's, if there's 10 nodes in the input and there's five nodes in the output, guess how many connections there's going to be? 50. Um, so we can, we can do more of these, but no need to. So we're making a densely connected network with the functional API. So notice the first thing that's very different. Um, we have an input. So in this case, you need to specify what your inputs are by making this little thing. It's an input layer. Uh, it takes a shape. Uh, so this returns a tensor. And you feed this tensor into other layers. So in this case, I make a dense layer. So this dense layer, it's like a little function in here. So if you guys are familiar with functional programming, these are like little lambdas. So, so I make a dense layer, and I feed into this dense layer some inputs. It spits out a tensor. I can then feed this tensor into another dense layer, which will, um, this, this guy, right here, which will be a new tensor. So I just, I just I feed it into these little guys that eat up tensors and spit out tensors. So that's, that's super yummy. Um, I can then feed this in, get a prediction, and then finally, uh, to declare a model, I need to say, hey, what are my inputs and what are my outputs? And that's, and that's the entire model. And there's this kind of like very interesting part about this, which I think uh, is very interesting, is you could specify this big graph, you know, multiple inputs, multiple outputs all over the place. But your model can only consist of a small part of the graph because you specify a set of inputs and predictions. So I could, instead of having inputs here or instead of having predictions here, I could put X, right? That's, that's the final thing. And then you could do all the goodies. You do all the goodies just like last time. So you go ahead, you compile your model, you fit your model, you blah, blah, blah. So let's just, let's just run this so you guys can believe me. So we'll use the TensorFlow backend, we'll churn, and then blah. So, okay. So we can make this uh, as complex as we want. Um, uh, so complex that we can even take these models and use them like little layers. So each model itself is like a little lambda. It's like a little layer. So in this case, I get a new input shape. I get a new input. And I call the model on it. So, ta-da. It's kind of, it's, I think it's very, very interesting. Um, in addition, this, this is really great if you want to have like something that's time distributed. <coughs> Excuse me. If you want to have something that's time distributed, and we don't need to go into what that means, if you want to have like a high-level uh, thing that takes in other models, you can have a, uh, uh, in this case, it's time distributed. It takes in a model, and it spits out a model. So it's pretty cool. Um, you, can, you can read a little bit about what this does. Okay, so that's the beginning. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is multi-input, multi-output stuff, and then we're going to be talking about layers. Oh, oh, and, and sharing the layers. I know you don't want to share, but... Um, okay, multi-input, multi-output models. So I go ahead and I get a, a, a new layer. This is called a merge layer. It's called concatenate. It takes two outputs and it concatenates them together. So if this guy is 10 dimensional and this guy is 20 dimensional, it puts them on top of each other and it makes a 30 dimensional uh, output. So in this case, I make two inputs, Xn, Yn. I feed them through two different layers, right? I concatenate them together and then, oh man, oh, you're super excited about this. And then I spit out this it's weird. So I, so I go ahead and I take this, the, so I, I, the two things, I combine them together and I split them apart. Wow. Right. So right here, this uh, Z, I go ahead, I feed this into a dense uh, sigmoid. 
So in this case, we'll train with binary cross entropy. So in this case, it's a binary I spit out. And then I spit out a, a tenfold uh, classification here with a softmax. It's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty dang cool. I'm, I'm, I'm super. And you can, you can even look at what the model is uh, later on. And you can define a model of this. So uh, I, can, I can show you. Um, so you can define a model of this. In this case, you just say model, my inputs. I need to specify two inputs, uh, xn, yn, uh, two outputs, x and y. And we can even look at the summary. And the summary is kind of weird. It's kind of weird. It doesn't do things exactly right. Um, so it's, it has the inputs. The inputs are the first thing. It has the dense, uh, this dense here. These are, these are the second things. It has the concatenate. And then it has the outs. So, so it kind of it kind of tries to put them in sequential order, but because these aren't like natively sequential, um, it's kind of hard. Uh, later on, we'll be doing a little bit on visualization where we can actually visualize all of this, um, the graph in like a super neat way. Um, so, so stay tuned. Um, okay. So, so that's that's one way to make a model. Uh, that being said, you're like, whoa, I've got multiple inputs and multiple outputs. This changes the way I compile, it changes the way that I fit, it changes the way I evaluate. Um, so the way, well, the way it changes the way you fit is, is super self-explanatory. Instead of taking a set of data and a set of labels, you just take a list of two datas and a list of labels. Um, in terms of the way you compile things, it's actually somewhat confusing. Um, First, you can go ahead and you can say, hey, you, you learn, you only learn, you can only learn with one thing. You're, the way you learn is one thing, but since you have two targets, so you have two outputs, this is multi-output, um, you, you've got two different uh, ways you're scored. So I've got a binary cross entropy and a categorical cross entropy. And I can, I can even set weights for these scores. So I, so I basically take the binary cross entropy and I add it to the categorical cross entropy times 0.02. Uh, um, so, so I, I, have, I have weighted stuff, and I have, so I have a loss for each particular output I get, and then I can weight those losses. Um, in addition, um, and I, I like this a lot better, it's a lot cleaner. Uh, if you have names for your layers, you, you can just go ahead and you can make a dictionary out of them. So x out will go over to binary cross entropy, y out will go over categorical cross entropy, x out will have a weight of 0.1, y out will have a weight of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, x out of 1, y out of 0.2, uh, and I fit using xn's data is data, x, yn's data is data, yeah, whatever. Um, uh, x out's data is x's, and y out's data is two categorical y's. And we can go ahead and we can fit. We can run this first. Um, we can go ahead and we can fit. So these, these two ways, they fit the exact same thing. Uh, notice the fits are going to be a little bit different because there's stochasticity in the way that you fit. Um, okay, so that's pretty cool. This is um, this is multi-input, multi-output. The next thing we're going to, uh, going to be talking about. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is uh, sharing layers, uh, which which is also somewhat pretty cool. Um, so remember, each of these layers is like a little lambda function, and we can reuse the lambda functions. So we have inputs, right? We we just got a single input. We have a layer that we share. Ooh, pay attention. We apply this layer to the inputs, and then we apply it again to its output, right? Um, and then again, you just you spit out some some prediction here. So this this is incredibly cool. You can share layer weights, and this is incredibly common um, in in deep learning. You know, one one of the reasons for this, and I, I can just go ahead and show you. Um, you know, one of the reasons for this is the number of parameters is so small, right? Um, so I, I, I spit this through two layers, two distinct layers. So layer we share, layer we share, and then dense. So this, this three-layer thing, and remember what the three-layer thing had, it's 14,000 parameters in our previous one. In this case, it's only 4,000. It's, it's much fewer uh, parameters in this case. Um, and this is because we shared uh, the layer weights. Uh, we shared what's inside. So. We're going to be talking a lot more about layers and specifically what they are, but just know if we use the functional API, we can share them. Okay. Now, the final thing that we need to talk about is the concept of a node. So previously, life was a lot easier. Um, what, what do I mean by that? Each input, each layer had a single input, it had a single output. So I make a layer. Um, I'm going to call it a dense layer. 
I'm going to make affine A. It's an affine transformation of A. So I'm going to look at the dense's output. I'm going to prove that it's affine A. Right? So that's, that's true. So I can look at the output of a layer via the dot output function. However, however, um, if I use this layer twice, if I use this dense layer twice, dense dot output doesn't have anything. It has multiple input nodes and multiple output nodes. So it doesn't have a distinct output. So unfortunately, the only, I mean, it's not super unfortunate, but the only thing we need to do is we have to instead specify get output at. So we look at the first output, which is zero. So that's affine A. And we look at the second output, which is one. That's affine B, and I'll prove that this works. Okay. So this is simple enough. This is true for a lot of things. It's true for output shape. Um, it's true for the uh, input as well. You can get input at. Um, so. Okay. Um, I, I hope this, is, um, this has been incredibly useful to you. Uh, previously, what we knew was we had a, a, a multi-layered single input, single output model. That's all we could do. And um, we didn't know how to, how to look inside the model, get inputs, get the outputs for specific layers, anything like that. Now we know a lot more. We can have a multi-input, multi-output model, different uh, loss functions on each model. We've got different weights for these loss functions, different pieces of data for each of these things. In addition, we can share layers, which is going to be incredibly important for reducing parameters. And if you're curious about this, please go over to Deep Learning History. We'll be talking about that a lot. And then finally, uh, we can we can introspect these models. We can figure out what layers have what outputs and what inputs. Okay, I hope this has been useful. Uh, next time we're going to be getting into I believe layers, and so I will talk about finally what is a layer? Uh, what is this thing we've been working with? Uh, how can I make one myself? What functions do they have? Okay, I'll see you next time. As always, a pleasure.